I want you to get ready, all right? We're talking about today and continuing a series of messages I started before I left concerning, and the topic is the believer's supernatural mind. And today I want to talk about the gifts of the Spirit as they relate to the supernatural mind that God has given to you. Now, this is not a message of mind over matter or some new age teaching of mind over matter. This is God over matter. Somebody say amen. And us agreeing with God concerning what he has for us. And I want to read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, starting there. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. How many know the world has a spirit? And it will beat you down if you don't resist it. We have not received the spirit of the world, world, but the spirit who is from God. Somebody say amen. Amen. That we might know. Everybody say no. no. The things that have been freely given to us by God. So if you're unaware of the things freely given to you by God, this is a teaching for you. If there's things you're not understanding about what God has given us through the Spirit of God, then this is a teaching for you. These things we also speak, Paul said, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. How many know the Spirit of God is teaching you? He's always doing this, and he does it this way, comparing spiritual things or things of the Spirit with things of the Spirit. He's always showing you what he's doing. He's always wanting to reveal things. But the natural man, listen, here's the problem. Many of us want to blame the devil, but but I'm going to say sometimes, most of the time, it lies right here with the trouble of receiving the things of God or walking in the great blessings of God. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. And that includes the gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But the natural man does not receive the Spirit, the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. You know, the gifts of the Spirit are foolishness to people. Even Christians, they just totally disregard uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and the listing of all of those wonderful gifts. I'm going to read those here in a moment. The natural man does not receive them. And so some Christians, even though they're Christians, their natural man, man is more dominant Their natural mind is more dominant in their life instead of developing the spirit man and the mind of the spirit, the supernatural mind that God imparts. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. For they are foolishness to him, that is the natural man, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual or of the spirit of God judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged By no one. Notice this. Isaiah, this is a quote from the book of Isaiah. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? And no one can instruct God, right? God is all. He has infinite knowledge and wisdom. Who has known the mind of the Lord that that he may instruct him? And then Paul adds to what Isaiah said and pulls from that verse these words. But we have... The mind of Christ. Somebody say amen. We have the mind of Christ. Who who knows the mind of God? We do. Christians do. Say, Pastor, yes, that's you. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Your word challenges us to rise higher. It challenges us to go deeper. It challenges us to open us open our hearts up more to what you want to do through our lives. God, you make it exciting. We make it boring. God, you make it adventurous. Lord, we make it something that is too challenging. So, Father, take off our limits and give us the mind of Christ himself. We thank you for it, for your glory, the thoughts of Christ by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Now, the natural mind, let me just give you a definition here. We've already discussed this several weeks ago, but I just got to pick it up again. The element 
of a person that enables them to be aware of the things of the world and experience them. In other words, God gave you a brain, a a little less than three pounds, I believe, up here. This is a supercomputer right here. In you is a... People, scientists still can't figure out how this thing works. It's powerful. It's incredible. It's a creation divinely inspired by God. And you are created in the likeness of God. You are a child of God through Christ. And you are formed in the likeness of God just as a creature of this world, just as a child, a human being. But the natural mind, though very, very powerful, because it's created by God, because of sin, guess what? It became a carnal, fleshly, fallen mind. The mind of Christ, though, has been given to us. It says, and this is just the definition, that this enables us, this natural mind, to be aware of the things of the world and experience them and to think and to feel the faculties of consciousness, of self-awareness and desires and thoughts, good and bad, and so many other things. The spiritual mind, though, on the other hand, is a higher level of thinking. It's a higher level of being. It's the mind that God has given you, the spiritual mind, the mind birthed from the spirit, created by God. God creates both of them, but he also creates the spiritual mind. You have been born in the natural. You are also born again. The spiritual mind, the element of a born again believer in Christ and only born again believers have a spiritual mind. It is the element of a born-again believer in Christ that enables them to be aware of God, the kingdom of God, and and the kingdom world that God gives to us, the spiritual world, the spiritual realm, and experience the spirit of God and to receive and think the thoughts of Christ, to feel the heart of God of the Father. This spiritual mind helps you know the heart of the Father. When I was, as I was just walking up here, when Curtis broke into that song of of, uh, inspiration back to God, we give our, our worship back to God, I could feel the pleasure of God in that. Could you feel the pleasure of God in that? See, your spiritual mind, your spiritual heart discerns things. You know in it when he's pleased. This spiritual mind helps you to feel the heart of God, the faculties of communion and oneness with God. Because of your renewed mind, transformed spiritual mind, you are more in tune. Listen, you are more in tune with God than you think. So often we think outside of the way God wants us to perceive him and to understand what he's doing. You're entire being as a born-again believer is dedicated to God. It is sanctified by God, and it is filled with the Holy Spirit. He knows your thoughts. He knows your motives. He knows your likes, and he knows your dislikes. He knows your hopes. He knows your dreams. He knows your ways, and guess what? He wants you to know his ways, too. He wants you to know his thoughts and his motives, Because it lifts you higher. It lifts you into the realm of blessing. It lifts you into the realm of of, of peace and power and grace and blessing in God. He wants you to know his thoughts. God wants you to know his thoughts. Everybody say that with me. God wants me to know his thoughts. He is so willing. You don't have to repeat that part. I didn't say stop, right? (laughs) He is so willing to transform the way we think. He's so willing to do it. When I got saved, my my mind was a mess. It was a mess. Anybody? Anybody? All right. So now where what is the state of your brain? What is the state of your thinking? What are you dealing with? You got to really assess this. You got to find out what God is saying about toxic thoughts because they're not from Him. He is so willing to transform the way I think. He is so willing to transform the way you think and live for Him because the way you think of Him is the way you live for Him. 
We've been quoting it all morning, James 1.17. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no shadow of turning and no variableness. There is no darkness in him. Everywhere he is is light and blessing and good things. And the Lord wants you to think about him this way. He wants you to think about how good he is. And anything that is disrupting that is from the enemy. It's only when you are willing to renew your mind in the things of the Spirit of God, the way you think about God and His works and His gifts in you and through you that sharpen your connection with the Spirit of God and release the greater measure of the kingdom of God. It's only then that the Spirit of God begins to unfold things to you that you never even dreamed. But if you're all the time mully-grubbing, if you're all the time, listen, I mully-grub. Anybody else mully-grub? Do you, what does mully grub mean? It just means murmur and complaining. Did you, did you know the Bible says do all things without murmuring and complaining? Yes. I need to renew my mind, somebody. Yes. Oh, and, oh don't, don't, don't look at me like that. I don't see any halos popping up. All of us do it. <laughs> but I really need, I need, I need my mind renewed every day. Every day, the Spirit of God wants me to connect with Him humbly and powerfully and release the greater measure of the kingdom of God and crush Satan under my feet. Again, this is not mind over matter. This is God over matter. It is my mind that I control, and nobody else can control what's up here, only me. And the Spirit of God enlightens me to walk in His power and in His grace. See, you... Will I invite you? You must be transformed and guard your mind as a believer in three basic thoughts of God. Let me give them to you real quickly. And I'm going to talk about the gifts here. We're going to start a study, and it's just very powerful. But I had to rehearse this because the Spirit of God wanted me to bring you back to this. And I didn't share this in other uh, this part in other messages, but here it is. Number one, God loves me. I need, to be rem- I need to be reminded. Now, I didn't ask Tara to sing that. I didn't ask Tara to sing the song, Oh, How He Loves Me. But the Holy Spirit knew, do I love Him with all my being? That's the question. I know how much God loves me, but am I looking at Him as a God of love, as love itself? And how much of God do I want? How much of His great love do I want? Does He love me? Yes, He loves me. God is for me. Number two, God is for me. He is for me. Somebody say amen. Amen. Say it with me. God is for me. He is for me. So whatever I'm facing, whatever I want to accomplish for him, whatever he's called me to do, God is for me. God is for me. He wants my family blessed. He wants me blessed. He wants me healed. He wants me walking in the blessings of God, the fullness of God. I know there's going to come a time when I'm going to graduate to heaven, and I don't know when that day is going to be, but as long as he gives me strength and as long as he gives me power and victory, I'm going to think right thoughts about how God wants me to be blessed. Because I'm in Christ. I've been washed in the blood. You've been washed in the blood. You've become a child of God. Woo, hallelujah. I could shout right there. And number three, you transform and guard your mind in these three things. God loves me. God is for me. And God has a future and a hope for me. I don't care what politicians do. I don't care what people... And listen, it doesn't matter. Listen, I know that we have a lot going on in our country, and I pray for our country. I pray for our leaders. But there is so much corruption in government. My hope is not in man's government. My hope is in God and in His government. He is establishing His kingdom in the earth. It doesn't matter that I, you know, yes, I pray. Yes, I get involved. Yes, we should be involved. We should never dismiss those things. But I'm telling you, God has a future and a hope for me and for you. The devil's not taking over America. He's not taking over the nations. God is taking over the nation. The nations belong to him. Whoever said, I, I know, I know Paul, well, Paul prophesies that things are going to grow worse and worse. And yeah, for the world, but not for God and God's people. Yes, yes. 
Look at the children of Israel in Egypt. It got really bad for Pharaoh and his people, but God preserved Israel. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, you're not. Are you with me? Are you with me? So don't, don't take a doom and gloom approach to the world and to the things that God has for you. You are the inheritors of the earth. God, this is our Father's world. In this world, God wants to bless and increase and encourage you. you got to think of God this way. Every thought pattern must be subject to these three things. God loves me. God is for me. God has a future and a hope for me. It's a big hurdle for some because they've been beat down. I had great parents. Some did not have great parents. They always encouraged me. I've always been an encourager of my children, always will be an encourager of you because that's what I do. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to encourage you. But some people didn't have good parents. They did not have good situations. And they got to overcome a lot. And so this is how you renew your mind. God loves me. His perfect love casts out fear. God is for me. And God has a future for me. And a hope. His word assures us of of this. And see, God wants you to understand that when you have these things in you and you cultivate this, That's what buoys you up to experience the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's the the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, all fruit of the Spirit that buoy you up to experience the supernatural power of God. If I feel like I'm undeserving of God's love, how am I going to operate in the gift of miracles? How am I going to operate in tongues if I think that it is foolish and sounds really weird? I got to turn my heart and my mind, and I got to cultivate a spiritual mind because the carnal mind does not receive the things of God, doesn't even receive the love of God, can't receive the hope in the future and certainly will not operate in the power gifts of the Holy Spirit of God. And that's where God wants every single one of you to be. He wants you operating in the gifts of the Spirit when you're trying to help your son or your daughter through a math problem. Did you know God's interested in that? And you don't even understand algebra. But God understands algebra. Somebody say amen. Amen. Only you, only you, child of God, listen, are privileged to walk and live and experience the full benefits, blessings, and impacts, not only of God's love, God's hope and future, and how he loves you, but the gifts of the Holy Spirit of God, and they are so important. How many churches and how many pastors have dismissed the gifts of the Holy Spirit that God himself, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has given to his church? And how much have we missed as the body of Christ at large, not this body, or as individuals, Because our carnal mind is more dominant than our spiritual mind. See, that was one thing that I had to overcome. I did not get, I got saved in a very good church, but I got saved in a church that did not necessarily practice the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And and, uh, there was a stealthy man named Bob Johnson, a guy that loved to sing but couldn't sing a lick, really. And uh, Bob, bless his heart, he said, Randy, after I got saved, he said, have you heard of speaking in tongues and the gifts of the Holy Spirit? And then, now, granted, this is a church that doesn't really practice it. They, uh, uh, Pastor Elliot is in heaven. I love him. It's a great church, still a great church, power of God, all of it. I mean, they experienced the power of God there. I felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But it's like... No, we're not even going to deal with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're too confusing for us. It confuses my mind. Because you're, you're dealing with it through the carnal mind and not the spiritual mind. But Bob, Randy, do you, do you, do you know about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Oh, man. 
never, never operant. I don't know about tongues. He goes, oh, you need to pray. And I'll pray for you that you, that you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. It wasn't Holy Spirit back then. It was the Holy Ghost. And it wasn't too long when I started seeking. It was, it was, it was God. I just, I just want your word. I don't want any, I don't want man's opinion. I want to experience, and I was a brand new believer. I want to experience the power of God. And I want, I want the spiritual mind. See, to understand miracles, Lisa's teaching on miracles. You want to understand miracles? You have to take your mind and transform it in the presence of God and think about these things from it. The moment your mind begins to doubt the power of God, you know what's working? The carnal mind, the natural mind. So it's easy. You just, I say it's easy. I've learned. I've learned to do this. You reckon, oh, oh, that's my carnal mind talking to me. My spiritual mind, no, I, I don't have duplicity of, and I don't have multiple personalities. It's just that these things work in you, right? That your carnal mind is speaking to you. Oh, I don't believe that. That sounds strange to me. But you're, you have to turn that off. Everybody say, turn it off. Like a switch. You just turn it, you shut it down, just like the devil. And you say, Lord, I thank you for these gifts of the Holy Spirit. I operate in them, and I'm going to operate them in them more fully. Yeah. See, the spiritual mind, only you, child of God, have the privilege to walk in this, to live in it. And without the spiritual mind, that shifts your priorities. You'll miss much of what God has for you. And some people, they never get over the carnal mind, even though they're born again. They never get over the carnal mind when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they are so important. We had a, a young man uh, the, just recently who came forward at the prophetic station who had a hip injury or something, a sports injury, and he thought his career was over. And I don't mean to embarrass him. I hope, I, I hope I'm not embarrassing him. So I won't point him out. But listen, the, we're going to we're gonna have to get a testimony. Alfred and, Alfred and Evelyn were over here at the prophetic prayer station, and the power of God touched him. He sat down, and one of his, one of his legs were shorter than the other. It just grew out. Now, I know that's a, that, that can be a trick of the enemy and, and so many false preachers. But listen, when God does it, he does, he does it well. This sports injury was totally healed by the power of God. Come on. <laughs> and I, I wasn't even aware of it. I'm over here. I'm baptizing people. Somebody say amen. amen. And, the, and Jesus is just working. And so your spiritual mind, your spiritual mind has to be acknowledged and turned on and open to God. Everything that God says is true. Everything in his word is true. Everything in his word that he promises is for you. Every single thing. And anything that the devil says contrary to that is a lie from the pit of hell. And you tell the devil to take his lie and go back where he belongs. See, the fact is your natural mind will reject the spiritual things of God including the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why am I taking so much time on this? Because you need to hear it. And everybody watching and anybody that will watch in the future need to hear this. God wants to take your spiritual life to the next level for the glory of Jesus. And it's not going to be molly grubbing and all of the problems that you have. It's taking authority and taking the mind of Christ to the next level of discerning the things around you and walking in the glory of God. The gifts of the Spirit are some of the most important things God has freely given to you. That your carnal mind easily dismisses. And the spiritual mind has to be turned on to receive. See, your spiritual mind, not your natural mind or your carnal mind is the way you sense and receive and know things from God. Let me conclude with this, and I'm going to pick this up next week. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 says this, and these are the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I want you to notice something. I want you to see how loving and how good God is, how freely he gives these things, and how, how it distinguishes us. See, the church is not to be like the world. We're not to be conformed and confined to religious liturgy. And I understand religious liturgy. Maybe it's in, important to some and all of those things. I'm not going to down anything that, that people get spiritual enrichment from. But I'm going to tell you, God wants the gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation in the church. How much distinguish, more distinguished we will be from the world when we operate as a body and as people in the power of miracles, signs, and wonders. That's how the early church did it. But we got to change our mind. we got to quit complaining. Well, how come we don't see the miracle signs and wonders at the early church? Well, why don't you see them? Don't blame anybody else. Somebody say, man, I don't want to ever hear that in this place again. I'm using my Mr. Bill voice again. I never want to see it again. (laughs) Never want to hear it. Why? Because you are the church. Somebody say amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'll conclude. Come on up here, Tara. I wanted to get into the word of knowledge because, wow, is the word of knowledge so powerful. The word of knowledge is such a powerful gift of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Whoa, can he operate? And he does it quite often in your life, more than you think he does and more than you acknowledge that he does. My brother was at work, and he had a complicated problem. My brother, Jerry, who was one of the people that led me to Jesus. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Him and his precious wife. I was in youth group. I was dumb and stupid. But anyway, he he had a work work problem. He had a presentation. And man, there was a guy that was just giving him really a lot of problems, really a lot of doubt, just being a critic. Anybody have those critics? They're not fun, are they? So my brother arrived early and just kind of walked around praying, walked around this project, walked around. I don't even remember what it was. And guess what? The guy that was being a critic never even showed up, and God blessed him. God told him to get up and pray. He told him to get up and pray and bind the devil and praise him right in the midst of his work. How many understand when you follow words of knowledge, God gives you breakthrough? He gives you breakthrough. Well, I don't think that's it. You know... Turn the carnal mind off. I know I'm getting loud, but I don't care. I'm supposed to read this. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Somebody say amen. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities. I mean... I mean, no, God loves to be active among us. But it is the same God who works all in all. Somebody say all in all. He's working all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Everybody say given. Given. Freely given. And how many many people are resisting? When God is free, freely giving. But the manifestation, everybody say manifestation. That is the that is that is the that is the the clarity of God. It is the it is the opening up of, it is the revelation of. It is understanding. It is God in the room. It is in you and him and he in you. But the manifestation of the Spirit. Listen, some of you, some of you know people who don't understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You need to get them here. They need to operate in this. This is the end time harvest, beloved. It is the end time harvest right now. There are lost people that will only be saved if you and your friends and those that you know reach them. Notice this. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one to profit all. For to one is given. Everybody say given. Given. Given Given freely. Do you know 
the things that are freely given to you by God, the things that are freely given by Him in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how He wants to use you today. He wants to use you today. Praise God. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. Now notice, this is in the congregation. There are things that God is moving. He wants to move in this place. In a moment, we're going to open the prayer stations. And there are going to be things poured out through these precious prayer partners that God is going to ignite in you a fire to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing now he's giving all of these things freely freely by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one. Everybody say distributing. distributing. He's giving just to each one individually as he wills. I want you to stand with me as the lights go down. Hallelujah. I want you to close your eyes. There's already words of knowledge operating. If you have kidney stones, I want you to come forward. I'm going to ask our prayer team to come. Bring the lights down to worship if you would. Just bring those way down. Power of God is here. Any kind of blood disorder or cataracts or even blurriness in your eyes, I want you to come. The power of God is here. See, your spiritual mind is open right now. And I want to make this declaration with you. I want you to make this declaration with me right now. Would you say this? Heavenly Father. Oh, say it like you mean it. Heavenly Father, thank you that I am your child. Thank you that you are so willing to impart your divine nature. I repent of my carnal thoughts and my carnal habits that grieve the Holy Spirit. And I gladly receive your precious Spirit and embrace the glorious gifts of the Holy Spirit that you so freely give. Thank you that I have the mind of Christ. I can think the thoughts of God. Thank you that I possess the believer's supernatural mind that you created for me. I receive your thoughts, your will, your words, your direction, your leading, and the amazing gifts that you so freely give. Right now, my mind is clear. My heart is cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And my spirit is open to you and all you have for me. I will hear you more clearly. I will determine to walk with you more humbly. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And everyone said, oh, come on, give the Lord praise right now. Hallelujah.